Hi, this is Paolo from the MB Academy. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you the process for creating talking bases like Spore in a lot of his tracks. So we're talking about these types of sounds. And the bass we're going to be making is this one. I know it's not the same, but I think the workflow behind these types of sounds is really what matters because there's just millions of possibilities out of this workflow. So this is the main layer. This right here is just a sub. So the one we're going to be focusing on is this one. But before we get started, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And if you want this preset and the project file, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so here I have an initialized patch. And the first thing we need to do is to set up our oscillators. So for this, we're gonna turn on the sub, turn on oscillator B, and we're gonna load a complex wave table on oscillator B. So let's load squelchy number three. Why not? Now we're gonna boost the level of oscillator A. Let's make sure we set this into the default sub wave. Let's boost the unison of both oscillators like this, and then we're going to run FM from B. Like this. Next, we can map a macro, this is very important, into the wavetable position of oscillator B. And then all of this mess, we can filter it with a bandpass. Make sure you route both of the oscillators. And now, Let's bring the cutoff down. And then let's map this same macro into the cutoff right here. And now let's rename this macro as harmonics. This macro is going to help us control the harmonic movement of the sound. This is going to be very important when we want to sequence this sound. So now let's use a separate macro and let's map this into the mix of the filter. Let's boost the resonance, boost the drive a little bit. And now this macro is going to open the filter a little bit. And so we can consider this as an amplitude macro. So whenever we want to control the rhythm or amplitude of the sound, we can do it through this macro. Now, one very important thing too is to set a different range for the pitch bend wheel in case you want to control the pitch bend with this wheel right here. We can also set a macro for that, which we can map into the cutoff like this. So it goes higher and then we can go into the matrix, select macro three as our source and modulate the master tuning by 19 points, which is going to be two octaves. So as we move this knob, we get that very cool movement. And as you can see, we now have a lot of controls to create a lot of different bases. But let's keep working a little bit more on the texture. So let's go into the effects and let's turn on the distortion. We're going to set it on diode 2. And we're going to boost the drive. Now this sounds super messy, so let's bring the mix down. And not only that, but we're just going to distort the highs, like this. It's very subtle, but we can make it a bit more obvious if we map our first macro here. Let's set this to more than 1K. Very nice. Bring this a bit lower. There you go. Now let's turn on a flanger. Bring the mix down. Bring the depth all the way down and map this same macro here in the depth. Just to add more movement into this. Bring the feet down. Let's add a phaser. Bring the rate all the way down. Depth all the way down. Now this frequency. 
will help us control the format of the sound. So maybe we can even map that in the same macro because this one is meant for harmonics, for texture. Very cool. Let's bring this down and now let's bring the mix down. Now let's turn on the filter, leave it on the MG low. And for this one, we're going to use our amplitude macro. So now this macro decides when the sound is going to open and when it's not going to be very present. Next, we're going to add a chorus after the filter. Let's boost the mix a lot. The reason why is because we're going to have a low pass filter right here. But actually, we're going to map the harmonics macro into this low pass filter. And next, we're going to add hyper and dimension. Leave it as it is. And then we're going to add a multiband compressor. We're going to boost the gain. And so now, we can start having fun with all of these macros. But wait a second, let's just add a bit more of post-processing. So the first bit of post-processing is some overdrive, then some trash. And here in trash is fairly simple, setting it on multivan and boosting the sub a little bit of the mids, and then adding a crunchy mouth on the highs. Then we add an EQ, and on this EQ we have it on mid-side mode, and we're making sure that none of the side information is present on the sub. And we are just giving different curves for the mids and the sides, so the sound is wider. Next we have some chorus, which is some chorus just adding that effect. So let's go back into Serum and let's rename this last macro as a pitch. So if we click on each of these, now we're going to be able to automate them in Ableton. So I went ahead and I just click on configure, click on every macro and now I have the controls right here. So let's have fun with this. Let's go into the last part here. And let's start adding some movement. Chon, chon, chon. I'm thinking about that movement. Ton, ton, ton. So, ton, ton, ton. That's a bit too fast. Chon, chon, chon. Chon, 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 room. So, that will be my amplitude macro creating the rhythm. Now let's create a texture. So one thing that really helps me is to click on this plus button, being able to look at the rhythm of the sound and then control the harmonics macro and say, hmm, now let me decide what kind of texture do I want for each of these hits. For example, let's say I want a falling shape like this for the first bass. And then let's say I want a rising shape for these two hits. Nice. And then let's say I just want to sustain movement here. So now we have that jump, jump, whoa. <laughs> like it's talking, right? And then we can click on this plus button and now we can automate the pitch. And let's see, maybe we can make it go from high to low. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Maybe here on the last bit of the sound, it can go up. Or maybe in the middle of the bass, it can go up and down. I really like this part right here. And I would even resample this and just use it on a different track. Very nice. Remember that at any point of the process, you can go back in Serum and change something inside the pack. I really like that wavetable right there. 
Nice, let's boost the sub even more. Actually, we don't have a sub because we have a separate chain right here. So let's just copy the pitch of this into that sub right there. I don't think it's going to have the same pitch. But let me just fix it real quick. There you go. So now... Very amazing sound. And it's completely original and it just came from playing with this set of macros. Uh, now, to emulate this one... We just gotta change this automations. So let me just bring the pitch one right here. And now I'm just going to skip to the future and show you the curves that simulated that reference. Here you go. This is pitch, this is amplitude, and this is harmonics. As you can see, there's just a lot of different possibilities with this workflow. So if we put this against the original, still is different, but at least we now understand how to get different movement, different pitches, how to make this space talk, and how to manipulate it in ways that we can just create hundreds of sounds like this and implement them in our tracks. So that is going to be it for this sound and also for this video. I really hope you found it useful. And remember to get subscribed to the channel if you haven't. Hit the notification bell to not miss any of our future videos. And if you want the preset and the project file, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.